welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. We are here live Thursday, April 7th for one of the best shows of the year. Dan and I live here today. This is the Up the Archer Varsity Special Edition. Dan, we are joined by the main man, Archie the Dragon, here to support us today. The main star of the day. What more could we want today? We've got a packed show from the biggest <laughs> and best sports day of the year for our university. Cannot wait. Don't worry, Archie's going to feature plenty in our show. <laughs> We've got plenty of guests to join us here today. Archie, one of them, but plenty of guests from our teams. Plenty to show you about the victories, results, and even the losses on the day. We'll go through all of it here on Cardiff Met Sport TV. Thank you for joining us. I'm Atticus Peed. Dan Ryder joining me today. And first, let's take a look. What do we have coming up, Dan? Well, it's a packed show. It was a packed day yesterday. We're so busy. Coming up in the show, the men's, women's running game in the basketball alongside the wheel high-flying wheelchair team. We've got Keith uh, Clearborn and Rebecca Ganley joining us to talk all things court. We're watching the Met men's football team. They took on Bath with a weakened squad yesterday. Uh, and there we're going to check out all the action and highlights from that, from Blake and Ben. On the, field, uh, the hockey field, we saw the men's and the women's take uh, action over the lunchtime period and on the court again, the netball with the women's for that. And finally, it was a great day for both rugby teams with entertaining games all around, so we've got plenty to look forward to. First of all, though, let's take a look at the basketball action of the day. Three games yesterday, like you said, Dan, wheelchair, women's, followed by men's last. Let's take a look and see our reporter, Reese Jones, covered those games for us. What happened? Take a look. A massive day of basketball action at Varsity, which had it all. Atmosphere, crazy shots, and some victories. The Archers got off to the best possible start with the wheelchair team trouncing Bath University in what ended up being a convincing victory. Leading the scoring was all-star Jade Atkin, who scored four times as many points as Bath's entire team. But it was a real team effort with a great atmosphere. Bath was truly outmatched and only scored two points in the first half. And a special shout-out to Ben johnson Rolfe as well, who was heavily involved in assists the entire game. The wheelchair team did their job, picking up five points for the varsity table, winning 74 to 10. The women's team kept that momentum swinging their way, with Amber Dean putting on a show for everybody in attendance. Loads of razzle-dazzle was on display in the Founders Hall at Bath University. However, everyone was contributing to the scoring, with Angelina Morazzi draining six three-pointers in the match. It was a true domination from the entire squad, with Cardiff Met coming away with a massive victory. With this being some of the players' first varsity, the Archers enjoyed playing at such an exciting event. Well, it's a dominant victory, 103 to 47. I don't know how many points and assists you had. We think it's in the 20s for both. Uh, incredible performance, though. What are your thoughts on the game today? Oh, man, it's just great atmosphere. You know, we've heard, heard a lot about varsity and all the great um, environments that they bring every year. So glad to have it back. And then uh, it's just fun always, you know, out here in the crowd. Now, this is your first varsity ever. Uh, not just here, but in the UK, all of this. I'm sure this is the first year you've heard of it. So what are your first thoughts on varsity after today? Uh, I think it's a great event, you know, to get um, all the teams involved across the campus, sorry. Um, but yeah, it's it's cool to see, you know, throughout the year, everyone plays on Wednesday, so we kind of can't watch everybody, so this has a great event so we can see everybody on one day. In the final bit of action for varsity basketball, the men's teams took the floor. The game started off extremely close with Bath maintaining a slim lead and the Archers draining loads of threes to try and stay in the game. Keith Claiborne was a focal point on offense in the first half, drawing loads of stick from the heckling home fans. We're here at the half. Cardiff met down 29 to 30 seconds against Bath University here in Bath. In the second half, the Archers need to step it up, collect a few more rebounds. They're losing the rebounding battle. Let's see what they can do as we head into the second half. In the second half, the Archers couldn't claw their way back, with some players having played their last ever game in an Archer jersey. So we're here post-game with captain today, Liam Norris. Uh, Liam, this is your last varsity performance. Uh, obviously a tough loss here on the road to Bath today. Reactions to this game, first and foremost? I think, I mean, for the spectators, it was a great game to watch. You know, we unfortunately didn't play our best basketball um, like we have done in, like, during the season. Um, shout out to, to Bath fans and Cardiff Med fans. You know, they made a great atmosphere for my last one. Um, yeah, we just didn't lock in first half. Um, and I think let the crowd get to us a little bit at the turn points. Interesting to say that because in the first half, I know for you specifically, you hit a lot of threes and a lot of shots were going in, lots of comebacks I think were starting to happen. But in the second half, it just kind of fell apart. Do you think it was all just the crowd and letting that get in your head or what specifically happened throughout the whole team? I think um, especially going from like Monday's practice, one thing we said we had to do today was react in the positive way and react in the right way. We knew with the crowd as big as it was that this, this is going to be a game of runs. Uh, Bath went on their runs, took, you know, made their baskets, took their runs. We just didn't quite react in the best way and we didn't also get our runs. We had a couple of runs, but you know, they were the better team today. It's tough. 
here in the Bath Basketball Arena. There were three matches played between the wheelchair, the men's, and the women's teams of Cardiff Met and Bath for varsity. Cardiff Met walked away with two of the three victories with the wheelchair, picking up a 74-10 victory with Jade Atkin dropping 40-plus points in that one. The women's team performing just as well, winning 103-47. Uh, Amber Dean having an absolute all-star appearance there, but really that was an absolute team win. Um, and then the men's team, a really close game, unfortunately, finished 84 to 68 in a loss. Um, really tough finish on that one, but Cardiff Met will take two out of three victories and massive day of basketball here up the Archers. A massive day of basketball action at Varsity. Welcome back here into the studio, Atticus Pede, and we are now joined by Keith Claiborne. Big round of applause for Keith, everybody. Woo! Hey! <laughs> Keith, thank you for joining us. I appreciate you being here today. Um, I know yesterday was probably your last game in an archer's uniform, correct? Yes, yes. Thanks, you guys, for having me today, too, as well. Of course. I know it's uh, obviously a rainy day, so fun getting here, I'm sure. But um, last night, not a great result, of course. 84-68 loss uh, to Bath in that final varsity game for you. Uh, opening reactions to that game, how did that feel for you, your last ever archer game? Um, it felt great. I mean, playing in that atmosphere felt like a high school game for me back in the States. Um, so it was just fun to see everybody there. Obviously, it was their home court. It would have been nice to have a win on their home court. But um, just the environment that I was in, I just wanted to enjoy that last last part of playing in the Archer's uniform. Yeah. Now, I know we just saw the highlight of Mark's massive three-pointer from half court. There were plenty of highlights there on the day for Cardiff Met and for your team. Uh, obviously, not the victory to go with it, but plenty of good things that happened. It did seem like everybody on the team enjoyed it, I think. Uh, how do you think the team felt throughout the game? Did the crowd affect the game for them specifically, either with how they saw the game emotionally or made them have more fun? What did you think the rest of your teammates did? Um, I think the crowd did play a part. Um, I feel like most like most of our Bucks games this year, we haven't had a crowd of that atmosphere. Yeah. So it did kind of play a part, um, but I felt like in spurts that it helped us and then they kind of had more people there so it kind of helped them too um, but for the most part I mean I felt like everyone enjoyed it um, uh, some of them were that was their last game as well um, that have played here in Archer's uniform so everyone just wanted to go out and we live with the result that in. Fair enough now I don't mean to go back to just negative things here of course but I'm curious on your thoughts on this because in the fourth quarter you were taking as many of the shots as you could obviously the shots were funneling through you the same thing happened with the NBL side mm -hmm. uh, the relegation to Oxford last plays of the game they were looking to you the whole time throughout the entire year you've been a leader on the court in your play um, how do you think that sits for you as you go back home to the United States after this uh, what, what are your takeaways from the Archer program having been such a big part of it for this past year um, well first I want to give a shout out to James uh, he actually helped me get over here so um, and it was fun playing with them but I just kind of just played my role and just kind of did usually what I've always done playing basketball uh, just score the basketball <laughs> as you guys can see um, definitely so um, but I mean it like I said it it was fun um, and NBL and, and Bucks uh, unfortunately both and NBL we got regulated but it is what it is and then Bucks yesterday just kind of didn't go our way but I mean I've always felt like I could score the basketball so I just that's just what I came here to do yeah Keith I have to ask you mentioned obviously it was your last game in the emotion what were the emotions like how, how did it feel when, when that final buzzer went what, what went through your head um it it felt like here we go again because I actually didn't think that I was going to be playing basketball again after college um and then I had this opportunity so it's just like the emotions were kind of not, it was exciting, but then like after it happened, I'm just like, well, now what do I do? Like basketball, is, I'm not going to be playing basketball on a competitive level anymore. But I always knew that this day was going to come. Um, so I'm just enjoying it. And I feel like the career that I've had with basketball has been great. And I wouldn't trade with anybody else's. You mentioned you're not going to be playing basketball competitively or professionally going forward. What is the plan going forward for you? Are you just going to head home and, and, and decide from there? I am going to be going home and I want to get a job in like the sports operations. Um, so I want to probably get it into like the NBA. So I've been applying for jobs like that and just seeing what, what happens with me. And then I'll also be going home and I coach um, during the summertime. So I have that and I will be doing like training sessions with uh, ages 8 to 17. So I'll be doing that when I go home too. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Keith, for joining us. We're really, really glad that you uh, got a good send off at Varsity yesterday. We've also been joined today by Rebecca Ganley, who has been playing wheelchair basketball this season for Archers. And hopefully we're going to get her into the studio now. So, Rebecca, come join us. Big round of applause, everybody, for Rebecca Ganley. Keith, thank you for your time thank today. You. Thank you very much, Keith.
All right, Rebecca, welcome in. We're excited to have you here. You guys were part of the biggest win yesterday uh, for all the Archers teams, 74 to 10 in the wheelchair game over Bath. I, I see you laughing already. Opening thoughts on that game. How was that experience for you guys? It was very different. We knew going into it that we'd have a big win, um, but we found that a lot of the players, they weren't formed already. Bath had never had a good wheelchair team. Um, and so for us, they weren't very experienced. So we thought, oh, we'll take use of that. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't give them an easy time, but we needed the double points. We went, went a bit over, but yeah, it was a good game. Everyone had a good game and People got some shots up that they might not have gone in Bucks, so it's a good opportunity for everybody. Yeah. Now, I know you're the Bucks captain, of course, and you've been a big part of the coaching for the squad, not only here, but also in the Women's Premier League side on the weekends as well. What were you most proud of yesterday after that big result? The teamwork everyone showed. I think we've got a lot of experienced players within the team, but also we've got a lot of new faces. Um, and those freshers that have come straight in, they really develop quickly. And the players that have got the experience of being given their knowledge to them and you know, we've got great coaches, but it's really been the people who have been through it that can answer the questions and show them what they're doing that have been really valuable. Rebecca, it's, it's, it's been a really, really busy season for you guys, obviously, with, with across all the wheelchair basketball teams, and, and you must be really proud of how it's gone. Yeah, definitely. I mean, God, Bucks, we didn't expect to do well, as well as we did in Bucks to an extent. Um, we had a great time at the final. We were very fortunate to go there we were the only Bucks team I think to go to the finals and so yeah. that was really special the fact that it was a wheelchair team as well um, we had a great experience unfortunately we couldn't get the win but the aim is to go back next year and bring home the gold and fight back against Nottingham again but it's been a great season for everybody in both teams uh, and personally for you where, where do you feel your game has been good this season um, I think for me I've developed a lot through Bucks being captain I've not um, had sort of a leadership role in that sense before and so for me I've found this really interesting and I've kind of thrived off it in a sense and I think getting the minute to higher game within the Premier League has been really good for me getting the experience against some of the GB players has been fantastic. Now Keith mentioned this he alluded to this just a moment ago as well uh, the Archers program is full of people and I think cultural and relationships that just make it such a great experience there. How do you think the Archers program is benefiting you, not just on the court, but off of it? Is this really a, an impactful experience for you in your life? Yeah, definitely. Like for me, I've not just been playing and I want to get involved in the coaching, but I do a lot of table officiating and I've met a lot of people. I've grown in confidence and I've had the opportunities from being here and I've only been here since September, but for me, it's done so much for me and I'd recommend it to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, Rebecca, thank you very much for coming and joining us. And to yourself, Keith, uh, congratulations on yesterday. We're really glad that the uh, the basket, all the basketball teams really showed up and uh, put good performances in to end the season. We're going to move away from the court now and head over to the rugby field. The men's and women's were in action yesterday and the women's really did put on quite the show. Well, <laughs> both! Promising start for the Archers girls. Can they get a second score here within 10 minutes? And they're going out to the wing. Steps back in. Is she over the line? She is! Second score for the Cardiff Met girls. The Cardiff Met. And a break. She's still going! Amy Rothro, she's finally been taken down. What a run from number 13. And it's going out to the wing again. We're going to see another score on our wing here. We are! That's the third Cardiff Met try that we've had in the first 20 minutes of this game. Secure the ball. Aaron Singleton feeds the ball, step back inside by the scrum half. Going through the forwards now, can they get over that line? And they're over for a fifth try for Cardiff Met in this first half. They just can't stop them scoring. Um, 
No, I just think that um, with the mixture of ones and twos, maybe there's a bit of a miscommunication between some of the players. Oh, what a hit that was. And it's been turned over by the archers. And that's their sixth try, just like that. Yeah, it'll be a good one to get involved in. I assume that Catherine Richards won't be able to get involved in the, in the sevens potentially for Cardiff Met. As we just see a, another score. Doesn't get that, but it is an emphatic win for the Archers girls. What a brilliant way to finish our rugby at Varsity 2022. Well, we're now joined in the studio by Freddie Caspi Pearson and Laura Cardiff Satterley. Guys, welcome. Thank you very much. It's really great. Guys, what a win yesterday. That, that was dominant. Freddie, that was an incredible game, wasn't it? It was an incredible game. It's one of the best games we've played all season, I think. Yeah, and, and, and 53 points up. The attacking play was just incredible, wasn't it? It was. Um, we have had a few new combinations in the team yesterday, um, purely because it was seniors playing. Um, so we had Leah and... Amy in the centres, which was great, um, and obviously the, the twins in front row with me, great. <laughs> we, we work well together, so it's good. And Laura or Cardiff, Laura Cardiff, <laughs> we'll go Cardiff. <laughs> just, the, the tries you guys racked oh. up, the, some of the attacking play was just in, insane. It was insane to watch. I had so much fun watching it. Um, was gutted to miss out because of injury, but it was so so good to watch, and I was just so happy to see the girls. I feel like everything really gelled together. Um, and yeah, it was just so, so class to watch. And it must be great for you guys seeing all that work in you've put in in practice and in training just really coming off. And, and you, you did it on the biggest stage. You did it at Varsity. You got that win over back. It must have felt really good. Yeah, it, was, it did feel amazing. <laughs> it felt um, so good. Considering we've lost most of our games this season, all the ones anyway, it felt good to come away with a big win like we did. Um, the last few weeks we've been doing sevens training and I think that actually helped us quite a bit in 15s with our speed and our attacking play. I think we've got more creative with it yeah. because we've been doing the sevens training. Like, Does that help with the fitness as well, would you say? 100%. Yeah, yeah you, get, you, get, you get a lot more running <laughs> involved. Yeah. Yeah. It was good to see a great crowd there down there as well. Yes. And, and yeah. there was plenty of people watching, which was nice to it see. Was nice. It was nice to hear the supporters on the sideline singing the chants that the boys normally get to hear that we don't hear very often. So it was good. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I think it was good, the scheduling that we were after the men, so the crowd stuck around for that, and it just made for a really good environment for you guys to play with. Definitely. We did hear one chant. I, I believe the words are, if you can't score, go to bath, something yeah. like that. <laughs> what, are, what are the words of that chant? Do you guys if know? You if you can't score, score tries, go to bath. bath. Oh, wow, that's brutal. <laughs> it is a little bit savage, but when you're 53 up, no yeah, up, please. You guys you did take no prisoners, you've got to pull the punches, yeah. yeah. Their supporters oh, yeah. were, were saying, saying rude things to us, so we had to bring it back. I think they've, in all fairness, <laughs> they've beaten our twos in the league twice this year, so we really that's true. felt we had something to prove this year, mm -hmm. so I think that's why Made them pay the it price. got a little bit feisty and, and got a bit excited. <laughs> Well, you, you speak about fantasy, you've you come out black and blue here, you've got bruises yeah. and stuff, it, 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 really feisty game as well. It was quite feisty, yeah. Um, the scrums especially, they did try and give us a fair fight, but we did dominate them quite a bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, tackling wise, they had some good hits, some big hits, but we just yeah. were a bit bigger. I think all credit now, to Beth, they are a great team, but because yeah. we were able to combine different players and have fun with it, like we just came out on top. Now you guys mentioned, you know, the, the combinations you guys had, of course, mm -hmm. and just how good of a game this was for you. But it's not like there weren't challenges. I mean, the weather was seriously, that was really challenging. Lots of rain. Yeah. How did you guys deal with that? Well, we used to playing in the rain. We yeah. in Cardiff. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah, no problem there. <laughs> but no, it was, it was this change of the sun and then all of a sudden wind and rain. But it was just, you just got to go with it. Go with the flow. If you drop a ball, fix it. It's, we it's a good yeah. attitude. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and moving on from 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 your guys' win this weekend, Wales are back in action again. Yeah. Um, and we, we already two great wins against Scotland and Ireland, the, and then England this weekend. How do you expect that to go? Well, she's English <laughs> and I'm Welsh, so <laughs> we have different views on it. Yeah. Um, but I think it'll be really good. I'm under no illusions that England have been pro for as long as they have. So, as much as I want it to go well, I think it will be more of a learning experience. Um because Wales have only been pro for about two months now. So we've been able to catch up to teams like Scotland and Ireland and that sort of thing. But I think it'll be another couple of years before we reach England's standard and are able to put 53-0 on them. Well, I, do think, <laughs> I do think Wales will give England a fair fight, mm -hmm. especially compared to the last few years. Um, but 
I want to say overall England yeah. are a better team. But <laughs> Still, those are very diplomatic answers. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, we'll, do you get we'll Miss Turpin in training? Is it, you know, the English Welsh sort of rivalry yeah, there? Yeah, only on England Wales game day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They did actually get her in a Welsh shirt on the weekend before when, yeah. when you went. I got you in an English shirt, so it's fine. Yeah. We'll talk about nice. That. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for joining us. And, and we're really glad. A, a superb victory, like we said. And, and you really, really did put on a show. Speaking of feistiness, the men were also in action yesterday. And, and their game really, really did get quite feisty. They are over. And we have another scuffle down by the try line. More scuffles coming, it seems every single time it'll happen now. As things start to fall over. Quite a serious bleed here. Will Perry was going to go all the way. What a try by Will Perry from his own half. And he's over and he's actually pulled his hamstring over the line here. The Mets in all jumping in, Perry's not getting up. And we have another scuffle in behind the try line. Well, we're now joined by one of our one half of our Buck Super Rugby <laughs> commentator appearing and our rugby correspondent, Griff McKee. Thank you very much for joining, Griff. It's great to have you down. You were down in Bath yesterday and, and what a game we were treated to. Oh, unbelievable. It was a... Uh, Seriously feisty. We've just seen that on the VT. Aggression, you know, rivalry as well in varsity. <laughs> some heated, you know, <laughs> exchanges between some yeah. players. Um, it didn't quite boil over, I would say. You know, we didn't see many punches actually go in, I don't think, from our angle anyway. But nah, a brilliant game. Yeah, unfortunate for Cardiff Met not to come off with a victory. But I think what varsity is more about is giving the third years their final swan song, you know. It's the last time they'll get to put on that jersey. We spoke earlier with uh, the basketball team and the women's rugby. It's about having that opportunity to enjoy. You I, did mention, sorry Dan, I wanted to ask about this. We just saw on the clip, did Will Perry hurt himself on that try? Yeah, so Will Perry, he's, done a, he's made an absolutely <laughs> unbelievable oh, run. No. And then he's pulled up just at the end. I, and he, <laughs> as he was coming off, we heard him, I've pulled my hamstring. And I, I, oh, no. I didn't see it. Did he go down? You were there. Damn, I, yeah, yeah, no, he, he he made that break and he, and he you know, cleared half the field. And I was, I was commenting. I was yeah. like, he's over the line. I think he's pulled his hamstring as well as he's gone up. <laughs> he's straight down. Yeah, because it like. didn't look like he pulled it before he landed. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was a strange one, but <laughs> what wow. a way to go out. Or, well, oh, what we thought yeah. at the time was going to be maybe the match winner for Matt didn't quite turn out to be. But um, yeah, what a, what a moment for him. Yeah, and, and there was a good atmosphere down there. You know, it, it is vast and it is competitive, but but the players were really on form. They were chirps in, they were, they were chops and they were enjoying it. And I think you did catch up very briefly with Charles Rylands down on the touchline. Yeah, well, it's a different environment, to be fair, um, being at Varsity. Uh, we were pitch side, so we could do sort of in-game interviews and we... We caught up with Charles Islands during the match. It was a strange experience, but no, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I think I think we do have footage of, of that quick interview you caught with him. We'll take a look at that. I believe Charles Ireland is going to come up for a quick interview. Charles? Yeah. There you go, exclusive. <laughs> that was Charles Ryland's live on the pitch. Oh, cool. oh, and it's a poor pass out there. Warboys cuts the line. Warboys, is he through? He's going long. George Warboys, across he goes, and it will be a bath win at Varsity this year. And Griff, Charles Rollins <laughs> did say that when George Warboys comes on, we'll be in for a tough game, and he came on and scored the winning He scored try. the winner. He unbelievable run. We've said that before this season as well, Warboys is the man to look out for, and he came on, he changed the game. Him, him and Wooten as well at the nine, both of them scored in exceptional tries. Uh, great players, and I think second years as well. So Bath next year in Buck Super Rugby, they will be uh, a better side potentially than what they were this year, finishing ninth. Fingers crossed for them, but for Met, obviously hoping to bounce back. But Met are losing quite a few of their big players this year, which is a a big shame for the club. Yeah, and, and there are a few levers, but as we've already talked about, it was a nice atmosphere and a good way to go out. And I don't think they're too fussed about the loss overall. No, I don't don't think they were too fussed about it. I, we got we got to see Eve McVie out on the wing in the centre. <laughs> Bailey Bailey Telford played thirteen for a, a few moments, so it was one of them games where 
It was kind of a bit, mm, we'll give this a go, we'll put you here, we'll put you there. Just have a laugh, really, and enjoy it. And we got to see the likes of, you know, Elliot Salt getting involved. He hasn't particularly broken into the Buck Super Rugby team this season, but he really played well yesterday and so shows promising signs for him going forward in his career, potentially playing maybe champ rugby next year for a different club other than Met. But, it's a, yeah, it's a shame to see some lads go, <laughs> as it is every year. No, definitely. Now, I know, obviously, going into the offseason, this isn't exactly the last game you'd want to have. Obviously, the Bucks Super Rugby semifinal loss uh, to Exeter, and then now is this. But, like you said, this is their <laughs> C team, so it's not that big of a deal. Going into the summer for a Cardiff Mets Bucks rugby team, how do you think you should feel ahead of the next season? I think they should feel positive. They've got um, some brilliant talent coming through. I feel like the name, uh, as people are telling me I say this name too often on commentary, and, but it's hard <laughs> not to say his name when he's probably the best player this season. Roma Zheng, he is going to be a star again next year for sure. And Steph Davis as well, playing fullback. He's a fresher, so he'll hope to come back from, it, from his injury. And then Brad Roderick Evans, he's staying for another year. That is certainly nice. a positive. And, there's a couple of partnerships across the field sticking together. Dil Bartlett and uh, Barney Langton staying on for another year as well. So plenty of positives for the Archers and potentially another successful season next year. Who knows? It's hard to say now. <laughs> the final hasn't even been yet. But yeah, um, yeah it's, it's going to be a painful you know week next week watching the Buck Super Rugby final for the lads thinking we could have been there and potentially should have been there the way Cardiff might clawed themselves back into that game last week. But it, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, Griff, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we'll give you a little round of applause. Well done on your work this season, yourself. And it's Rob a on sad the round of applause. It is. It no is. enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much for joining us. No problem. So obviously, a tough game for the rugby. Let's go to another game, another area where some fights on the field, hitting each other with sticks. I think a little, Dan. We'll see. Check out the highlights from the hockey matches yesterday, men's and women's coming up. I'm Molly Heathcote for Cardiff Met Sport TV and I'm here in Bath University where Cardiff Met ladies hockey team are playing Bath and it is the last quarter, it is currently 1-1, very close, it is tied, the crowd's loving it, fantastic game to watch, here's some of the highlights. Well, obviously, Molly Heathcote joining us here, our hockey correspondent. Thank you, Molly. We're excited to have you in here today. <laughs> now, Molly, obviously, big result yesterday for the women's squad, a 2-1 victory. I didn't yeah. see the second goal on camera, though. No, so the second one, we couldn't get it. it was, I'm quite disappointed we didn't get it because it was an awesome goal. Um, but, yeah, it started tipping it down. And, I mean, it was like another storm had just come ridiculous freezing the camera was getting soaked rushing to put it away <laughs> the teams under the the dugout like shivering I'm putting coats on them but yeah the the goal was amazing like uh, she just came out of nowhere got it in and it was like so it was 1-1 it was really close and like the crowd's loving it I was like 
getting way too excited for someone who's supposed to be on the camera. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, we were waiting for this second goal because we really wanted to win. And Anya, who scored, Anya Atkin, she's been having shots for, like throughout the game, which some of them are on the, the video there. Um, and then just to finally get it in like the last couple of minutes was like so nice yeah. and really good for the team. But yeah, it's, it was a great day, great day. Near a last minute goal, if I heard right, correct? Yeah, yeah, like we like three minutes, I think, do you? Wow. Yeah, so the pressure was on. It was like, hey, we've got 12 minutes. And then I think when it happened, everyone just like jumped up. And like, I think even Bath were probably like, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably not, but. And, and it was a great yeah. atmosphere down there yesterday. We, you know, I, I saw a few, even a few of the rugby boys down supporting during yeah. the game. Like everyone seemed to really be getting into it. Yeah, which is so nice because we don't always like, we don't always get the same support as the rugby. So I play hockey myself, but the when it's a big game like this as well, like it was it earlier on, lots of people got down there and then it was the women's game and then the men's followed and it was a 2-2 draw for the men. Um, but yeah, loads of people down there and it's quite nice with the hockey because we're not like many of the other clubs, like the men's and the women's, they're quite close and we spend time together, um, hence why I'm here and not a uh, another hockey player. So <laughs> who played, they are actually all, I think they're all out together now, um, which is really nice and celebrating because they deserve to celebrate, uh, you know, the first team, they didn't do too well in their league this season, but then to get that win at Varsity, at Bath, I think it's the first time they've ever beat Bath in a Varsity as well wow. for women. Yeah, so That's it was impressive. really nice and like, yeah, everyone was just so happy, so it was really good. Now, I did hear, though, Jess Hurst. This yeah. might be her last game for Cardiff Met. Yeah. She's the most capped player for Cardiff Met, yeah. though. Is that right? she is. Well, that's what we believe, um, and that's including, like, the years off of COVID. So, But, yeah, she it was her last game. I think she was a bit emotional, um, but she got through, watched the men's game, um, and, yeah, it was really nice. I think she had a good game as well. I thought she played really well um, and strong because when it was 1-1, um, you know, it was a bit like, oh my gosh, Bath are actually in this and they could win. She had to be there and motivate the team and be like, come on guys, let's do this and then we can watch the men's game and celebrate. Um, especially with the weather being so cold and people get injuries. There was like two Bath injuries in the first half, like ball to the face, stick to the face. Um, one of the girls in who plays for Cardiff Met, she went flying, um, yeah, head first, just up and over. Um, so yeah. It was a really entertaining game, and wow. anyone who was there, I'm sure they enjoyed it as well. Well, fantastic. And, and, and you, you very quickly mentioned the men's, a two-all draw for them. Could they have won it? Uh, it would have been nice, yeah. They, it would have been nice if they won it. I think it was very even. Um, Bath actually put out a really good like team, and I think they played really well. Um, but credit to our boys for going down and putting in a fight. And I think they were disappointed with a no-one-wants-to-draw, you-want-to-win. Yeah. Um, but it's better than losing, I guess. And they still got two goals in there. They got uh, Jack Rhodes and Marty Sears, who scored, which is just it's nice for them as well. Well, thank you, Molly, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Well done on the hockey team. So, yeah. Superb results there all around. Not losing, that was great. Well, we're going to move now from the field to the court, and we're going to take a look at what happened in the netball yesterday.
Well, we've now been joined by Cardiff Met captain Gwena Davis. Gwena, thank you very much for joining us. Big round of applause, Gwena. Difficult result yesterday, 38-58 loss, but still entertaining and great to play at Varsity. Oh, definitely. And even though the score didn't quite go as planned, I think that the performance that the girls put in was phenomenal and we couldn't have asked for anything better, really. What was the difference in the game yesterday? Where, where, where did Bath get one over on you? I think, if I'm honest, they have a Super League shooter who is really, really tall and we did struggle to sort of keep the ball away from her a little bit, which did give Bath the advantage. Um, but overall, I think that uh, playing through court, we were pretty much match to match. And I think it was if the shooter maybe wasn't quite as tall, maybe we would have been more of a threat to them. <laughs> <laughs> and and the crowd down at, in, at Bath yesterday, it was, it was quite a big one. And, and, and did that play into the game, do you think, at all? Oh, definitely. And I think that the girls knew that it was always going to be a uh, consideration and, and I remember Kira telling us about it and that's why it's always good to have home crowds when we play in Bucks games because it just gets you used to it and I know that we had Tia uh, a third a third year player um, and she she's the only one out of the team that have played in, in a varsity game and she warned us about what the crowd was like but I think that the girls fed off the the, the noise and everything instead of letting it get to them which was really really good. And, and talking a little bit about the wider season so far, and, and we're getting towards the end of it now, how do you feel like it's gone? I think the season has gone really, really well. I mean, this is my last season for Met, and if I were to compare it to my first season and my first year, um, I couldn't have asked for anything better. I think that the performance that the girls have put in has been top-notch from the start, training sessions, everything, and we've had some new coaches coming in, and that's made a difference as well. Speak about those new coaches. Uh, I, I know your new coaches have a lot of energy. We hear about them all the time. Talk to us about them. What are they even like for you? The coaches are fantastic at Met, and especially Kira coaching the varsity. She'd introduced the new um, training block that has been taking place over the last month, really, um, and preparing us already for this game. Um, and Kira's energy towards everything, whether it's analysing stats, organising friendlies, everything. Everything that she's done has contributed towards how, how well the girls played yesterday, and I couldn't thank her enough. Now, you just mentioned the new training block. What does that entail? What does that mean when you say a new training block for a new coach like this? Um, so when we finished Bucks, we sort of had a, a week off and then Kira mm -hmm. made it. We had to retrial then to come back um, to the varsity team because as we finished Bucks, we did realize that some of the second team players had been playing really, really well. And obviously we all trained together and they are performing well. Um, so we retrialed during that first sort of week of the new training block. And um, and then Kira organised friendlies and she sort of did a timetable of where we need to be so we would progress bit by bit as the weeks went on. Wow. And and personally for yourself, your final varsity and, and if one of the final few games you're playing for me, was it emotional? It was a little bit. I'm not I'm not gonna lie, usually I don't get emotional, but when I think Kira said in the team talk at the end for the third year girls this was the last time that we'd be putting the Met dress on. And I think that's when it hit hit home a bit and I think it hit home as well when we were running out at the start I thought that was really nice um Bath had organized the the netball teams run out and when the home crowd just stood up and and started cheering I couldn't you know I couldn't feel more emotional really and and what, what's next for you personally next for me personally well I'm going to try and become a teacher in a school um I'm going to do my PGCE next year and uh, up in North Wales I'm going to just take it from there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you're going to keep playing netball at all? Oh, Even definitely. Though... Definitely going to keep playing netball. I mean, netball has been a huge part of my life for, for years now. And I don't think my love for netball will ever die, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gwena, thank you very much for joining us. Commiserations on the result yesterday, but great season all round. And, and we really appreciate you coming in to speak to us. Thank you very much, Gwena. Well done. Thank you, thank you Gwena. We appreciate you having us here, coming here to join us today. Uh, next, let's take a look over at the water polo as we look forward to the final matches of the day for Cardiff Met. Let's go to the men's and women's water polo.
went so well in that. Everybody gave it their best shot. Everyone got the ball. Everyone made the right passes. Nobody made silly mistakes, and that's all we wanted. Okay. So. Welcome back into the studio. We are now joined by Quiva Hennigan. Not only are you the Cardiff Met goalkeeper, you're also our producer for the show today. We're thrilled Woo! to have you here. Yeah! Yeah! Come on, Quiva. Multitasking today. Well, Quiva, we are thrilled to have you with us. Obviously, I know yesterday was a bit of a tough day, a 10 to 16 loss. You're the goalkeeper for the squad. Yeah. How did that loss go down for you? A uh, bit annoyed with myself because I know there was a lot of them there on staff, but once you get one on one with a keeper, no matter what sport you're in, football, in the pool, it doesn't matter, it's, it's going in if you shoot it to the bottom corners. And that's exactly what they were doing, but I know some of them did come off my hand, so it's really frustrating for a goalie if you get a hand to a ball and it still goes in. It's just because you know you were like that close to getting to it. It's yeah. just really annoying. Now you're one of the leaders of the team, of course, but especially as a goalkeeper, uh, you're a bit isolated from the rest of the squad. I know that's a different spot to be in. How does that feel for you? Do you feel a little isolated back there as the goalkeeper? I like it. You've got the best view on the pitch. Like That's you true. see everything, yeah. you watch people swim, like you see people cutting in through the back or someone swimming down the middle who's not being marked and you see it before the player does, like you, you notice when they're going to make a play or like a, a specific move, if they're going to do a weave, we can notice it because we're from an angle, we're looking back at a different perspective, whereas the players out in the middle of the game, they don't necessarily see it as quick because it's right beside them and it's very easy to get their blind spots. Yeah. Now, Dan, I think I heard her say, did you call it a pitch? You call I, the pool I a pitch? Yeah, pitch. I was a bit confused yeah. about that. Is it a pool, pitch? What, it is a pool. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I, growing up in football, it's forced a habit to call it a pitch. <laughs> it, it's, I grew up from a swimming background, so it just, Fair. it seems weird to, a pool is for competing lengths. But it's the same enough. thing. It's, it's all the same in my mind. I just do get slagged a bit for it. <laughs> and, and I and, still and, call it kickoff. Yeah, <laughs> as, uh, there you not, go. Uh, as a goalie, off. though, what what's it like? You know, you say you enjoy watching the game and stuff. What was it like yesterday? Uh, you know, was there pressure? Do you think? Yeah, a bit, a bit. It's weird. Like, it's weird having a live crowd there in the pool. So it was having a bit of pressure from that, and um, but it also does feel nice. I like I like that sort of pressure. As like, you have to be a bit mad to sit, stand in the goal and enjoy getting the football walloped at your face. Yeah. And, and enjoy it. You have to have a, a bit of <laughs> madness about you i like the pressure i don't let it get to me i sort of i thrive on it a bit more so it just it's what, I, what i'm used to i've always played football and goals i don't know anything else i tried outfield for a while and that's give me yeah. back between the sticks oh, fair <laughs> makes sense yeah, yeah now obviously yesterday's game you know lots of pressure in that game of course but talk to us about the progression of the season so far for the team how's yeah. that been it was actually really good because a lot of us a lot of us only started playing in September, myself as well. And we had three girls who did play competitively. We have one playing for Wales and two who play for Exeter in the National League, okay. which is like Premier League of Water Polo. Sure. And um, so the rest of us all just started playing this year. So we all came from swimming backgrounds, which was fair. I came from football. So I had the little bit of a bit more coordination, but the other girls have never picked up a football in their life. So that was a bit tough for them to get used to it. And tackling, they were all a bit uh, worried about hurting the other team. <laughs> I was like, if you don't tackle them, they're gonna do it to you and probably 10 times worse. So just, you get over the worry bit. Yeah. But no, we did progress a lot through the season. We got some big wins on the table. Fortunately, we did have to give up a lot of, we had to concede a couple of games due to not being able to find the referees. So we had to get, uh, we got deducted points then. But oh, man. it's a bit of a shame. But we still big uh, big regret from the season was Swansea. Like we played Swansea twice and we lost twice. But really, we, we could have won it. Like we could have won both of those games. It was we lost by two or three goals. That was very annoying. But it's just showing that how much progression we have made to come that close to a team who's full of players who have played. They've all 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 the Swansea have been playing since they were kids. So it was nice to see the yeah. progression of us, how we've built as a, together as a team. And we've got, we've a nice little bunch of nine of us now. Good. Went from seven to nine. 
That's good. Well, everybody, Quiva Hen again, thank you for joining us here today. Woo! Appreciate you yeah! taking time out for this afternoon. <laughs> now let's head from the pool pitch, I suppose you call it, <laughs> over to the football pitch. Let's take a look at some of the, fo the highlights from the men's football yesterday. And this varsity 2022 Cardiff Met versus Bath University football match is underway. Yeah, it's important to have been defensively solid, but the first corner of the day is a short corner. Even though he tries to close it down, but it's a low driven cross, and it's an early goal for Bath University. It was a skewered cross across the pitch through the box. It bubbled its way through. Even though it couldn't close down the cross. And it has made its way into the six yard box. Not what part of Met wanted. The bar fans are going crazy. But it is hit back in towards the six yard box. And it is Coyle, I believe, the centre back of Bath. Got the goal. It was hit back in. It was a great cross from O'Glochlin, the goal scorer of the first goal. It was a deep cross just past the six yard box and it is hit back in. Oh, but he decides to play it off. You know, it comes off the ankle, so fair man tied there, but there's a chance there for Bath to try Richardson has pace to go through. He's just split the defence open. Coyle couldn't get it. It was a great effort, but an even better save. It's been two set pieces and it's pretty much a story of uh, long balls and frantic play as again Wolfiff almost gets in there from a long ball over the top. It's been a theme this game. Bath simply win it on this left hand side as Hughes on the left again. Gets a ball in towards O'Glocklin again. Just as I say, the difficulty that Mess have had to deal with on the left hand side as O'Glocklin disrespects the archers with an archer celebration the number 10 then play griffiths looking to beat the pressure of llewellyn oh, cuts back played in towards lachlan again on the left hand side good play for bath intricate passing so far to keep part of meta bay as it goes backwards towards constantino who finds o'glocklin a bit of space and it's called Offside, crowd there excited, but the referee did put his flag up. Carries it forward. Grajnes with a lot of space on this left hand side. Nick Price challenges it, does enough, but Grajnes picks up the loose ball into the yard box now. Hegarty, huge. Grajnes with the attempt to kill the keeper into the top right hand corner, but it was a superb save from Luke Wilson. He wants his hat trick. Hopefully, he completes it in fairness to him. Because he's probably the only one on the pitch who wants this game to do. But unfortunately, he won't be able to. As the final fixture of the Varsity 2022 has concluded. And the final score here on University Campus of Bath. Bath 3, Cardiff Met 0. We're back in the studio once again. Charlotte Carver, our football correspondent today. Charlotte, thank you for joining us. Now, Charlotte, uh, first of all, tough loss. Uh, take us through your reaction to the game yesterday, 0-3 loss. Well, it wasn't great for Met. I think Bath, they scored really early on, and I think that set the tone. When that goal went in, I thought, yeah, it's not going to be great. Also, it was the same sort of trend, not many Cardiff Met goals. Again, we could get the ball to the box. Once we got to the box, not much there. A lot of long balls, sort of hopeful, but not anything really paying off. Bath were just the better team. The atmosphere though was, for the first half was great. There were flares, for some reason there was this horrible grey kind of flare which just chucked on the track, stained the track. Um, nice. Bath probably aren't happy about that. But I, think it was, <laughs> I think it was there for Borders to be fair. Um, yeah, but at the rain, the weather was horrible. Torrential, torrential rain. You could see the arches were on the far side from us and I think you might be missing the highlights emptied, which I think might have also been a bit how the play on the field was as well. <laughs> yeah. And, and and the game, you mentioned obviously the weather was tough. It was it was a bit of a scrappy game. And once Bath got those couple of goals, it, it just seemed to be beyond that, didn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. I think also, I mean, Jared Richardson, he did get a few chances, but I think their goalkeeper was so in control. He was calm, collected. Yeah, there was no way I think we were going to get any goals. And, and you speak about goalkeepers. Met 
subbed the keepers at half time. What was that about? Yeah, so Luke Wilson came on and he made some amazing saves. I think it was the right call to bring him on. He kept it 3 0. I mean, it could have got a lot worse, but yeah, it's definitely the right call. That's good to hear. Now, I did only see a men's game on there. Was there not a women's game played yesterday? No, there was no women's because they have had, I mean, the most amazing season, I think. Like, I'm not sure what else could have really gone better, and they have so much more to come. So, obviously, in the league coming up, they have Card City on Saturday night at the Card City Stadium, which is obviously amazing. After that, they have one final game, and that's against Swansea, top of the league. If wow. they win both these games, they're going to win the league. So, obviously, they want to concentrate on that. They've also got the FAW Trophy final in a few weeks' time, um, again against Cardiff City. They've played Cardiff City four times already this season. <laughs> I mean, they've got to play them another <laughs> twice, which is a bit insane. And, yeah, because they beat them as well in the Gennaro Adam final for the trophy. So they already got one. It's like, can they do three out of three? That's obviously where all their concentration is going. So they didn't have a game yesterday, unfortunately. Well, we are excited for the game this weekend. Uh, 5.30 p.m. Saturday night, Cardiff City Stadium. Tickets are three pounds online, five pounds in person. We're all going to be there at Cardiff City Stadium. Join us there. We're so excited for that game. And, I mean, Charlotte, I know... The women's team really is the face of Welsh football right now, and we're really hoping they can pull off this title bit push at the end of the season. Oh, I think that, I think they have such a high chance. They've beaten Cardiff four out of four times. Surely they can do it another twice. Six out of six. Good it's omens, hopefully, there. Yeah, we, yes. we'd hope so. <laughs> well, Charlotte, I believe you've, uh, you were also catching up on the rest of the sport that was going on around VarCS, around the uh, campus in Bath. What have you got for us? Yeah, I was. So, interestingly, there was two new debut sports at Varsity this year. So, there was... Um, volleyball, which I heard had an amazing crowd atmosphere, people were really getting behind. Unfortunately for Cardiff Met, both men's and women's did lose 3-0. There's also weightlifting, which I think is quite interesting, didn't expect that. Um, it seems like they have three goes, you know, to see who can do the best lift and I don't really know. The highest weight? Yeah, tech yeah. technical. Um, unfortunately, Met also lost that, um, I think it was 402 to 306. Um, so it was a good game. Um, there was also lacrosse, which wasn't new, but Cardiff Met. I heard apparently one of the girls only learnt the rules six weeks ago. <laughs> so it's quite new. I mean, I think you sort of expected wow. the loss, but um, yeah, 21 6, but it was good that they did get some goals. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and, and we do have a couple of, uh, of tennis players on, on, on the undergrad course here as well at, at the Sport Media, and, and they were in action as well. Yeah, they were. Will Dunlop, he won his game. Um, unfortunately, the rest of the team. One of the girls did win their games, but it was 5-1 loss for both men and women. But we do actually have um, a clip from the tennis, so let's go see how that went on for them yesterday. Yeah, so tough day at Bath today. Um, two, well, one doubles that was quite comfy for Bath, unfortunately, but the second one that was like, really tight went to a third set. Um, a great win for Will Dunlop in the singles, brilliant. And then, yeah, the other three, a couple of them uh, just fell short, and then yeah, I just uh, I just lost in a in a tight second set. But yeah. Um, our day went pretty good. Chloe and Josie won their doubles. It was a really tight match, and everyone played really good. Well, for the boys, Will won, which was pretty good. And yeah, it was completely, it was amazing. It was an amazing day. Welcome back here into the studio once more. And now this time, we've got quite the guest coming up, Dan. We are joined back by Archie, Archie the Dragon. is back. We told you he'd make another appearance. How excited. And, and he's recovered from his race yesterday. We, we, I think we are, we are going to take a look at that. But uh, yeah, we, we thought we'd, you know, end the show with, with Archie in studio. And, uh, and, and he did go for the mascot race yesterday. He thought he'd take on Bath and, and, and go really go for it. And I believe we do actually have footage of that. We're going to take a little bit of a look now. But um, yeah, Archie did a good job for Matt yesterday and uh, we will hopefully have a quick look at that. Let's take a look at the footage here. Dan, you and I actually got the chance to commentate this. Let's take a look. They're out near the starting line, Dan. We've got Banyo Mala the Duck and Archie the Dragon on a roll. Here they go. Who do you have, Dan? Who's going to win this one? Well, the duck is on the way, and, and he seems to be... Oh, Archie's lost oh, it. Oh, no! He's smoked it. Archie's going to get beat. Oh, no, look at him. He's coming across the line, and he just seems to be walking across. And the duck is over the line to take the win. And Archie does come, and it's a bit of a damp affair to end it. Well, what a, what a shame that is. But, uh, well, what a win by the duck and, uh, and, and uh, Archie... Not looking too happy about the result there. Uh, we would speak to you, but uh, you just 
he just be beyond, uh, you know, he's so upset with the result, Archie. It was it was a bit of an embarrassment, if I'm honest, a shocker. Yeah, mate, I'm really disappointed. <laughs> I, I got all this fur on me. I didn't know about my, my big weight in the middle. It was kind of hard to run really fast. So I just kind of <laughs> fell behind early and here I am now. Well, Archie, there, there is always next year, we'd hope. We're, we're back at yeah. King Coy, so hopefully we'll get you back on the track <laughs> next year. Archie, everybody, yeah, let's give it up for yeah! What a result. <laughs> Well, I believe that is all we've got time for on today's Up the Archer Varsity special. What another year it has been. And, and despite the results, Atticus, what a day of sports it was. You know what? Only four wins for Cardiff Matt throughout the day. Uh, four wins, 13 losses, one draw overall. But on the bright side, an incredible day. Tons of fun. We're thrilled to have people like Archie the Dragon there. And we're just so proud of the 1,200 students and fans and players who were able to go. Just an incredible day all around. Yeah, and we are going to be played out this afternoon by one of the unsung heroes from Met this year, as he is every year, but Carl Robertson, photographer extraordinaire, has been at pretty much every sport, and uh, we've compiled a few of the best bits from Varsity. So, Atticus, thank you for joining me on the sofa. What a day, what a time, and we'll see you all soon.